Shoo! What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Before we jump in, I gotta let you know that Raycon is sponsoring today's video. Raycon is disrupting the electronics industry by making great sound for everyone. Their wireless earbuds start at half the price of other premium audio brands. Raycon earbuds give you eight hours of playtime and 32 hours of battery life total, plus seamless Bluetooth pairing and more compact design for a more comfortable noise isolating fit. You can use the earbud tap functions to toggle between three customizable sound profiles, noise isolation, and awareness mode. Raycon offers their wireless earbuds in a range of fun colors and patterns with a variety of fit options and no dangling wires or stems. The company was co-founded by Ray J and celebrities like Snoop Dogg and Mike Tyson are absolutely obsessed with Raycon earbuds. And the best part is Raycon has a 30-day free return policy. I love wearing my Raycon earbuds when I'm traveling, I'm mowing the lawn, doing chores, or listening to my favorite podcast. And my favorite part is they don't fall out. No matter what activity you're doing, these suckers are staying in. So if you want great sounding earbuds at half the price of other premium audio brands, click the link down in the description down below or go to buyraycon.com slash flare to get 15% off your Raycon purchase. Huge shout to Raycon for sponsoring today's video. It's brands like them that I partner up with that allow me to do what I do every single day, which is make videos for you guys at home to enjoy. So that being said, let's get back to the video. Alrighty, folks, we are now here at Brad the Builder's office. I am gonna steal a generator. Borrow, okay, steal, borrow. We, we, we've got this relationship where he'll borrow things from me, I borrow things from him. It's time that we get a generator. Welcome, what's going on here? Hello. What? Chicken farmer. Chicken farmer, home builder. Really? Yeah. You're doing it all now, huh? Well, not me, the kids are, but they, oh my, uh, dude, Look how many there are. Yeah. Holy smokes. 150 of those came in the mail last week. That's really? Crazy. They come in the mail. That is crazy. Yeah, that is nuts. So soon to move out to your backyard. Yeah, I was gonna say they're gonna be in my backyard here soon. So these are are these meat birds or egg layers? You know, these are meat meat meat, birds. meat chickens. Good, I'm running low. It's perfect. This yeah. setup's pretty sweet. Did you, des did you design all this, or no, was I, it? Did you draw up in the credit for it. Did you draw up in the CAD drawing? Did you do a 3D rendering of this thing too, or no? My kids, they 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 just did it all themselves. This is actually I I feel like this is a design. We need to we need to steal this. No, this is a really that. cool and it's gone caster. Like yeah. that's crazy. They're afraid to ask me because then it would be hydraulics and it'd have yeah. a metal roof. I, uh, yeah, I can see that. You hit a button and it just starts doing some stuff. I really do like the setup. It's really easy to get in and out. Well, if you like this, shop around. We got all kinds of doors, metal. Wow, that's that's a nice. I like that door. It's a nice door. That is nice. We, got, we had nice. We had nice things. This thing that looks expensive. Refrigerators. That thing looks really nice. A thermidor. She should put that in that old house. And then all this can go your warehouse Andrew so we can build you something on your really house. We're, we're gonna we're gonna take all this from your warehouse to my warehouse huh I'm gonna start hoarding materials this is an entire fireplace fireplace really floors tires heaters but what's cool is what don't you have stuff I want to build your uh, marina out of this so. yes that is something that you guys are gonna hear maybe a little bit more about in today's video we've hinted at it we haven't given them the plans but Brad's been he's been sketching some stuff marina tackle shop boathouse fishing dock tackle store it's gonna be everything all in all in one ice house ice house we'll yes put a hole in the floor oh really Don't you think be I good? mean that'd be pretty I didn't think that far that would be pretty cool imagine yeah. ice fishing just in the heat in, on a couch with yes. the fireplace. I like that idea. This is gonna be a mansion down. It's gonna be another home. Yeah. We're gonna pull a permit. Oh, they're gonna be pissed. And I can get furniture for you. All that. Really? We can furnish it. Everything Look at that. Everything is going in your house, Flair, out of here. Hey, by the way, we have a, we're making a deal on a snowmobile. Just call Andrew and it's- Really? You, you, this is for sale or what? I, Brad, I, thought you, uh, I thought you got some guys to clean this place out. We, that, oh, it's, it's been cleaned full. out. You didn't notice? <laughs> it's it's clean. It, it's cleaner. It is cleaner than the last time I was it here. Is. I will say it is definitely cleaner. You, you can walk into it now. So you're after a what? generator. A generator. Yes, I called Brad and I said, I need a really big generator. And he said, just swing by the shop. We'll see what we have. So the guy said, oh, wow, that is big. Step into my office. He said, no he said, he said 5,000 size. It needs to be a 220 plug. And he said that should be able to power the well so we can start filling the backyard pond. By the way, we did the math. So fun fact, where you live and where I live, there's no water apparently. Because the well that they put in, 25 gallons a minute. It's that's, all they can pull that's out, not very much. which is like a garden hose, maybe a little better. And so we did that. We calculated the math to fill the backyard pond. It'll take six months. 24 hours a day, six 24 months. hours a day. That's not including evaporation or seepage. Oh, so it's going to take longer. So probably a lot longer. Yeah. So 
this whole marina idea, it, it might sit on a little desert island for, for a <laughs> You might not be icing for a few years. Well, at least I don't have to worry about water you know, me too We've got much. plenty of time to put the foundation in. I mean, plenty of time. But that's, oh, that's a big dog generator there. So let's there. check her out. This okay. is what we, we actually built your house with this generator. Really? Because we didn't have power. So that's why I had to buy it in the first place. So it's a. Oh my God. Oh my gosh. This thing, that's a beast. This is the. Oh, that's got to be able to do it, right? I think it's the Benford 6000. 6500. 6, 6, 6, he said, is there two 20s? There's 220. 240. 120. 240 and 120. I think that's we'll make it, it work. That'll yeah. Yeah. Nice. That'll 20, work. 221, whatever you got, whatever you need, we got it for you. All right. I like it. And, and this I'm, is great, and I don't even have to buy it. This is a win win for yeah. me. Okay. Not for, necessarily for Brad, but hey, yeah, the, you do a little bit now. You, you Let's borrow this. One day you'll be able to catch fish in the backyard pond. So that, a, that, that'll, be the, that'll be the trade off. I'm going to sit on the couch and when we're ice fishing and just have a TV going and the. I like the idea of the ice fishing from the couch. Yeah. I, I feel like yeah. we got to figure something like that. Like corner of the inside that goes out over the lake where you can like. Yeah, I'm gonna ice have, I'm gonna have the whole thing sticking out onto the lake, and then you have a boardwalk going from the boathouse to the land. This is gonna be. This, this is gonna be exciting. Expensive. Sounds expensive, but it won't be that expensive if we're able to use some of these materials, right? Course, is that the, is that the idea? Well, we'll throw a ladder down. You can just crawl okay. Up there, like all right. Do in the ice mountain. Yeah. We yeah. We'll have, to, we'll, have to, we'll have to come do some shopping here once we're ready to start picking out furniture and stuff. That is gonna be. That's gonna be sweet to be able to come back here, grab some of this material to build this marina, apparently ice house. This is probably gonna be next spring because uh, one, we just don't have the time to like design it. And I want to do it right because there's only one, you only have one chance to do it. Well, I'm telling you. When we do it, it's gonna end up. It's gonna end up being pretty sweet. But this is all we need. So if we can take that, is it diesel? You were saying? Yes, diesel. Diesel. Okay, I got a big transfer tank. tank we should be able to keep her full, keep her pumped. So we're gonna take her down there. We gotta go talk to the well guys. They're gonna show us kind of how to hook it all up and get it wired properly. And we are officially gonna be filling the backyard pond in today's episode. You guys, stay tuned. Shoo! All right, we are back, ladies and gentlemen. Stole Brad generator. Bam. Well, plug on, ready to fill. But before we do that, I gotta show you guys, this is where we're gonna be doing the hatchery soon, sooner than later. Now that this should hopefully work, the water should hopefully come out. We can put a splitter on it. So right now there's a pipe running. So there's the, there's the pond, we can run another one here. So this big flat area will turn into the fish hatchery. Uh, and we're trying to decide if we wanna do two or one, uh, like two, one pool or two pools. So I mean, that's like a football field. So I feel like that's a pretty big pool. You could potentially have it put it in half and run two of them like that or two of them like that. Be able to have, maybe like we had this dream at the ranch, okay? Of having a big lake and then a fish hatchery. And then it didn't rain for two years and it never happened. Here, I'm doing the same thing. I'm having a big lake and a hatchery. The only difference is it's in my backyard and I put a well in because I'm not relying on mother nature. I mean, that's, per, I was gonna say, that's, that's pretty good. So with the dreams I had at the ranch doesn't mean they'll never come to fruition, but we just need to get out of the drought and I think it'll happen. But we don't get a whole lot of rain nowadays and there's really no watershed around here. So we went ahead and put the well in. But if we can put two pools here and then the one over there, we could have one for bait, okay, minnows, uh, tadpoles, shiners, any, any type of bait, okay? Not crawfish, can't have that. You don't want them burrowing through the clay of your pond. But then you would have another one that you could have anything you want. You have bluegills, you've got bass, maybe catfish. It'll be much easier to grow really big fish quickly if you're feeding them in a small area where you can make sure every bass gets 100 minnows a day or whatever you know that they could possibly eat. Meaning if you throw them everything in the lake, okay, you're relying on one, the bass, the predator fish that you're trying to grow to find the fish effectively, the bait fish, in which there's gonna be structure in there. There's gonna be things designed to protect bait fish, but we don't really wanna protect bait fish in the hatchery. It's gonna be a fish bowl. It's gonna be like an aquarium, just feeding frenzy, okay? So the goal is you buy small fish, you make them big, then you put them in the lake, okay? While we're doing that though, you still dump millions of minnows and a bunch of bluegills and some small bass fry, some really small bass fry in that lake and you let them run their own little ecosystem, okay? While we've got a, a kind of more of an artificial ecosystem here. And in that way, while those guys are getting big and while the minnows are spawning and while the bluegill are spawning and when you buy a million minnows, by the end of the summer, you got 20 million, you only paid for one, okay? You're making money now. Well, you're not actually making anything, but you're, you're, saving. you're saving money now, okay? And then on this side, we grow the fish and we can, we can accurately weigh the fish. We can net them out. We can weigh them. Are they growing properly? We can make sure they're optimal health and basically get them to be as big as possible, as quickly as possible. So when the time comes to take them from here to there, there's sufficient bait, 
So they're not gonna eat, you know, eat the lake clean, basically. And they're already gonna be that much ahead, okay? So we could be catching them that much sooner. Otherwise, if you do the typical thing that most, you know, game and parks people do, they dump a bunch of bluegills, a bunch of crappie, a bunch of catfish, and a bunch of bass that are yay big. And they're like, see in four years, buddy. And then you'll be stunted because we didn't put enough bait in there. We are not going to be like them. We're going to try to do it better. What are you thinking? I think we should tag all the bass. Oh. Now we're trying to grow to big true. ones. True. Instead of like just like the numbers, we need to name all the Oh, true. Like Jerry, all the like, just name them all. So I, I, I've been talking to a, a, a gentleman on Instagram who kind of does the biologist stuff. He's saying, so we're just going to call this probably three acres, okay? Uh, it, it, we don't know exactly how big, we'll just call it three acres for now, just to be safe. It could be a little bigger, it could be a little bit smaller. Three acres, he's got a ratio. For every 100 acres, you put in 100 bass. No, four, sorry, every 100 acres, you put 40 bass and 1,000 bluegill. That's his like food to fish ratio. So, I, sorry, did I say 100? Every acre, I'm, you, you, it's been a long day. So, 40 bass, 1,000 bluegill, okay? Like spawnable bluegill, meaning like three inches or bigger. But then the bass are like fry. You don't want the bass to be able to eat the bluegill yet. So, times three, would be 120 bass and 3,000 bluegill. That's his like magical ratio for growing trophy bass. So we would have 120 bass. 120. 120. We need 120 names. So we need 120 names. So get to thinking, you suckers. All right, in the comments. So again, will we will we alter it a little bit? Maybe. Will I will I factor in there lots of fathead minnows? Yes. Will I factor in their tadpoles? Yes. Meaning like. I'm gonna add those so the fish has sufficient food. But in theory, if you have 40 bass and a thousand spawning bluegills, there will always be enough food for the bass and they will never stunt and they will grow to five pounds within like three years. That's what this guy says. We are gonna factor cap it. Anyways, that's the plan. Hatchery's coming soon, stay tuned for that. It's time to turn this generator on and see if we can fill this pond before at some point this decade. That, we gotta get water. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Bef before we do any of that, we gotta get lake water. And we've, in the previous videos, we explained how we're not positive this lake is gonna hold water because it's not made out of clay because there's no clay up here, it's topsoil. It's, it's like 50% like topsoil, 50% clay, not great. So now that we can artificially fill it, we're gonna try getting some water on it and just watch it. If we fill it up three feet and then it goes, whoosh, then we gotta bring in the bet night, spend a hundred thousand dollars and your boy is gonna be hurting for a little bit, but it's all in the name of catching a five pound bass in the backyard, okay? If it holds, then you save a hundred thousand dollars and we all go party and eat beef jerky, I guess. Uh, the downside with this well right here, they only found 25 gallons a minute pressure, which for uh, reference, the lake, the duck lake that I sold had 300 gallons a minute and that's even a little low on like the spectrum of filling lakes and bodies of water. A lot of my other properties have 800. I've seen them over a thousand. It's 25. Basically a garden hose. You told me his cabin's got 1800. Yeah, 1800. Yeah. 1800. This is 25. Your, your typical garden hose is probably 15. Okay. So imagine taking your garden hose at your house and filling a three acre lake that's 10 feet deep. You could tell me how fast that's going to go. Anyways. All right. You ready? Should we give her a, give her a pull? Brad. Really? Come on, Brad. Hey, okay, I take back what I said. I'm sorry. All right, boys, this is the moment of truth. Is there any water coming out? And if so, does it look like a garden hose? I'm hoping like two garden hoses work. Worst case, I can get a hose down from there. We can, oh, we, yeah, we can, we we can double, double it. it. Oh, there's water. There's water. Let's go. Oh, yeah, it's about like a garden hose. I'll be honest. That ain't much. That's a full-size bulldozer. You know how many bulldozers you can fit in here? Like a million. <laughs> a couple hundred at least. This thing, oh my, you got, is it cold at least? Yeah, 50 degrees. So this is gonna be, which is odd, I always thought like you fill the lakes above, but the, the well guy was like, no, it's fine. We will put it down here for frost purposes, okay. All I know is if this thing ever does fill, there's a ledge here, cause like right now we're probably, I bet we're eight feet underwater, maybe seven. Yeah. So this will probably be 10 foot and it drops again. Ice cold water pumping in right here. You know how many fish are gonna be caught right here? This is gonna be, remember the bush streams are made of, okay, at the old house? I don't know what to call this ledge, okay? The lunker ledge or something. I, this is where all the fish are gonna be caught. Cause you got ice cold, fresh water pumping in on this basically forage flat, okay? Maybe we call it that. Yeah, where they come up flat. and forage. We should put, put a, a bunch of trees. Right I'll say, we'll put a bunch of rocks and trees. And then they come from the deep and they come up to eat cold oh my catfish mm. cove catfish might be catfish, catfish cove so yeah you can see the bulldozer are still doing stuff he's smoothing stuff he's just he's not digging like the pond's been done for a few weeks now it's just 
shaping things up, making it all purdy. Smooth. Smooth, all right? He's building a boat ramp right now, it looks like. I don't, that's actually not gonna be the boat ramp, but it looks like that. But yeah, you've got this, I mean, it, I mean, it's coming all the way down here. In just a short amount, how long is this clip? Two minutes? Nine minutes. Since you started talking. Oh. So we okay, well, it's been probably going for a minute. Yeah. I mean, there's water down here already. I mean. You got a waterfall. Erosion. Yeah, we got some erosion. We should probably fix that. I do, my excavator's sitting over there. There is some concrete from the gentleman that poured the shop. Thought the front yard was a great disposable area, but uh, well, there is some concrete. I could, I could crawl the excavator down here. Might be a little you dicey, but I could do. that rock pile on the hill right I there. I said there is a rock pile. Yeah, I think I can get some chunks of concrete. I can at least put one there, and then I probably got to put something here. Otherwise, it'll just, it, and it doesn't really matter. Like if this washes out, it's not like this is the, well, that's the dam, but this isn't really the dam. This is just like a, a mini dam. See, it's like a mini dam. A mini dam. Catfish the, fo the, the, the forge, forge flat. the forge flat, the lunker ledge, the catfish cove, big Sheila shelf, the Sheila shelf, the Sheila shelf. That might be the Sheila shelf. I like that one. <laughs> That's the pitch. I'm pitching a dig into the Sheila shelf right now. Wham. So we are in fact filling it. We calculated on a previous video, assuming there's no evaporation, which unfortunately the sun does exist, and no seepage, which unfortunately this is basically topsoil. Factoring none of that in, as if this thing was lined like a swimming pool. It takes six months to fill this thing. <laughs> so you factor in evaporation and seepage. That's at an and average depth it, of 10 foot too. I think this, we might this average thing's, This more thing's than. deeper than 10 foot by a lot. Like that right there is probably 12 and that's another six, 20 foot. It's probably 20 foot right here. Yeah, I bet so. So there's a chance this lake won't be filled till 2025. So hopefully you guys stay tuned. Alright, long time no see. Big Sheila is back in business. Alright, there's the old excavator. This thing was at the ranch for a while, being a nice, expensive lawn ornament. So we brought it up here. Chad the Dirt Guy did use it a little bit for the pond, because his excavator, I think, is down for the count, unfortunately. But we're going to use it today. And so what we're going to be doing is, there's, like I said, the, the concrete guys thought this was a great place to just wash out their truck. So, mound of uh, structure. So I'm going to try to pick up as many of, as many of them as I can. We, we probably just need two pieces. One, right where the water comes out and then two where the water like rushes down just to avoid any washouts and just unnecessary siltage. I'm not gonna do anything crazy because if for some reason the pond doesn't fill and we have to bet night it, any structure we put in there have to take out. So you guys might be thinking, Flair, why don't you put the structure in and then fill it, you little dumbass? Because if we gotta come back and bet night it, it'd be like tilling in a, a field with a bunch of stones in it. You ask the guys who farm how that would do on their, their planner and on their disc. Probably not all that great. Same, same concept applies. You gotta spread out the bentonite, disc it, and roll it and pack it in there. You got stones in the way, it ain't gonna work. So, with that being said, let's go ahead and pick up some stones, take them all the way down to the pond, and see how it goes. So you guys stay tuned. Big one will, will work pretty big good. Big one right where it's landing, then yeah. put those little ones where it's going over to the To kind of slow it down and divert it. All right, boys, see you guys at the pond. Sink or what? You about to sink yourself. Yeah, dang. Well, I mean, I wouldn't say it's like bulletproof. That's definitely gonna work. That's good. I think that's perfect. Yeah. It should, it's kind of dispersed. It's going from a two inch deal to like a two, yeah. three foot deal. Yeah, you still have some decent runoff here. But I can't, unfortunately, I can't get any closer. Yeah. 
I feel unless, like I'm about on the verge of calling Chad. Unless yet this x-ray is gonna stay in the bottom. Unless it's gonna be structure. But I was worried if this pulls up and then starts to go over. Yeah. We could I, that, mean, I think that thing we could push it over the edge of the hill by hand. Probably. And get it down there so where it's slowing it down. I mean down even if water pools here, you know, half even if half goes here and half goes there, I feel like that's better than all going there, I right? I agree, yeah. I mean it's not even washing it out that bad either. I mean I don't think it's terrible. I think you can see there's like a little dam effect going on right there. It hits it, makes it go here. Some goes. I don't think it's going to actually go over now that no, I'm looking it's going at it. Back, yeah. So it's basically pushing water here. Then that one's hitting. It's pushing water around. It's slowing it down. That's the idea of it. I just I think of like a creek. Yeah. If, let, let's just hypothetically, let's just say there was a creek down north <laughs> at all times. And it always looked like this. Would you hesitate to put a dam across it? No. I feel like you'd be like, it'll fail eventually. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean, though? Yeah. I like do. you look at that and you go, mm -hmm. Eh, if I saw a creek that looked like this and said, if you put a dam across the creek, would your lake fill? I would 100% say, yeah, no problem. That's a, I think that's a lot of flowage. Yeah. It just, it doesn't look like it from there, mm -hmm. but when you make it look like a creek. I mean, it feels, it did that already. We might be all right. We can stock that. We might be we able to put some, let's put ridge. some minters in it tomorrow. <laughs> I mean. I, I think me and you should slide this rock right over the edge to where it right slows there. it down right over the edge. Really? You think? Not a chance. Two man job. That's no. I don't even think that's a two man job. Really? That, my back is already just gone. Weenie hut. Dude. Well, hey, listen. You got the uphill advantage. Okay. You can get that side. Going. All right. See. Now look at the flowage. Spin it up. I mean. I think we need to get it like right to where that pivot is, so it hits it and okay. slows it down. Right, you guys just. Time. You just hang out. You got it. Hey, how's it going? Let's see it. I think we dammed it up there. Now it's really getting it. Yeah, I mean, that'll, I feel like that's slowing it down. I think it's going to hit it and slow it down a little bit. There or the rock will eventually just slide its way down there and we'll have no way to get it back. That's why. Look at this. What we got going on here? <laughs> God damn. Your ankle like no, that? No, my ankle ain't like that. That'd be a bad deal. It wouldn't be. I would be hobbling out of here. That little diverter is doing good. It's damming it up pretty good. It's really slow right there. Catch My only concern speed. is I feel like it's just going to eat out around the, rock. around the rock. Not saying that you can really do much about it, you know what I mean? Because yeah. now you see how concentrated it is right at the bottom of it. I don't know. I feel like, I feel like we might have been better off up here. Well, because it's already, it's, it's widening pretty good. It's, this is where it's concentrated. Yeah. I say that now after we pushed it. I mean, I could I could push this one. What if we put that rock over here? Should I should we just double it up? I mean, is that rock even doing anything? Move these two rocks around. Well, I can use the excavator on that one. You think? Yeah. Unless you want to just Oh, okay. All right. All right. Listen, you've been drinking your milk. I get it. All right. <laughs> now you're yeah, now you're about to let out all that. Which is good. That slowed it down. Making it come around this rock first. If we spin, I mean, you're you're dealing with water with a soft ground. I, 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 looking back at what we just decided, I think the only thing That's that was smart that was happened. that. The rest of this, it's going to always go around it. Because typically in a creek, the creek would have a rock bottom. I think everything we're doing right now is, is, not, is not all that. Um, no, I think that one over there is good. That was, that was a good decision. This it's guy, really all he did was, chan all we're doing is channelizing it. That's all, <laughs> that's actually all we're doing is actually concentrating it so there's more volume in a smaller area, <laughs> therefore more washout. You just saw us completely go Are backwards on this. Looks cool though. But the okay. Only way, the only way this one would help is if there was like another shelf right yes. there for it to spill onto. And if it went over, it has to roll it over. If it's it. always running under it, it ain't doing nothing. It ain't doing, it's just going to eat out. That rock's going to that rock's gonna end up down there. But hear me out though. Imagine a bunch of these rocks throughout this entire Sheila shelf. Okay, I think that's the one we're sticking with. The old Sheila shelf. Like, look, tell me that, you tell me a bass ain't gonna wanna sit right there and just munch. Look at that, bam, bam. But we'll line the whole thing. So, that's the plan. She's filling, she's filling faster than we think. Yeah, I think I'm, I, think I, I don't think I'm giving the well enough credit. I mean, don't get me wrong, the, to fill the bottom is not even, it's probably double to fill the top because it, it's shaped like a cone, you know what I mean? It's like a, like a, like a V shape. So. To get water all in the bottoms and actually not that big of a deal, it's to get it to spread out because it's just the vault. It's math or science. I can't. It, stay tuned. Shoo! All righty, folks. You ready for the pond update? Okay. It has been filling now for four days. We were going to give daily updates and then I realized, man, you guys would think we're filming the same skit over and over and over because there really wasn't much progression or growth. But I am pleased to say after four days, 
Bam! That's what the pond looks like, folks. Going for a swim? I mean, it's it's pond. It looks fairly deep, actually. So that's, I mean, it, that's more impressive than you would think, all right? All you haters out there. Flair, you're so dumb! I, think it's like, I don't know what else you guys said. I just assume you guys said that, I but... I think it's like almost one-fourth of the bottom. So, yeah, like about, about it's almost, yeah, you're right. It's about, it's, it's about a fourth the of the bottom. So Maybe if we did, like a month. If we did this in four days, times that by four, which is 16, plus okay. the, you know, photosynthesis stuff that'll happen, that you may or may not have the full bottom of it covered in one month. And then you gotta do that and go up 10 feet. And wider. And wider. So yeah, you're talking, yeah, years. Years, years of this. We do have a really nice creek though. Our creek is flowing. I, I did bring some waders, so I can kind of go down there and show you guys the situation here now that now that there is water, okay? There, like It's officially getting filled, there is water. You could go put minnows in there right now, okay? Now, if we shut that off, it might drain really quickly, which is kind of the, we're in the, right now, we're not in like the hole, just like fill the whole thing to the brim. It's like, let's just fill the bottom. Let's get the whole thing to have like a foot in it, kill it, and then watch it. And if, it's, if it drains as quickly as it looks like it is over there, which that's seepage, but it's the same idea where it's like, you know, shoot down the bank. It, Mr. Bet and I is going to have to get a phone call from me. And then I'll have to call the bank too, because I don't have the money. So that's, we're trying to avoid both of those situations. I don't want to talk to Bet Night Boy, and I don't want to talk to a banker, okay? I just want it to work as is. There's a chance that it will, but the generator's still going. And as you can see, we're actually trenching power all the way. So within like, I don't know, a couple days, we shouldn't have the generator anymore, and it's just power. Then it's just an electricity bill, which is sweet, instead of gasoline that we're burning right now. But I'm gonna go through, let me throw some waders on. I'm gonna, I feel like sweating right now. Yeah, you're gonna Even though I'm already sweaty. It's the old thigh leak. At least it's honest. It, it's not gonna, it's not gonna trick you, and you're not gonna think that, you know, it's not gonna leak. It's gonna leak. And it's just gonna be honest with you, which I respect that. You know what I mean? We shouldn't be thigh deep yet. That's that's my, the reason why I grabbed the old thighs. Cause I'm like, oh, we should be all right. So, but I am gonna get down in the mud. I want to see actually how deep it is. Cause it's kind of hard to tell from up here. And kind of walk around, see how squishy the bottom is. And we'll see what happens. The SA10. So I'll show you the creek first. So you guys saw through some nice rocks. You can tell we've got really quality water as it's already rusted that rock in a matter of time, but. Look how clean, it's, it's crystal clear. Like, well, now it's not. Yeah, it's now, it's, now it's all muddy, but the creek is flowing. Our little diversion work, the only, see there's only one here, I'll show them, a little washout here, not bad. There's a little, little depression there where it's cutting across this and it's eating that out just a touch, not bad. It's nothing too bad. And then through here, it, you know, it's slowing the water, but yeah, I mean, it's, it is eating right down there. In you know, four days, that's not terrible, okay? And then we do have another washout further down. That one's getting significantly worse over time. So that's the old Grand Canyon starting right there. So just chipping away that mud and putting it out there. So we might need some water slower downers today. We might need to get some more of them, but I'm gonna go ahead and start wading out in this sucker. I mean, the, the fact that there's water, I mean, you could stop this sucker for sure right now. Holy oh, smokes. Yeah, you might get to the thighs. I might get to my thigh. This isn't good. That's way deeper than I thought. Dude, there's a lot of water right here. Look at this. This doesn't look too bad. Oh yeah, I'm at. Oh, I found my thigh. Hey, how's it going? Oh god, it's way deeper than I thought. Dude, that's Are you pretty. Sinking at all? No. Is it pretty hard? It's hard. No, the surface is hard, dude. Dude, it's freaking. It's two two and a half foot deep. I mean, that's not bad at all. That's a lot more water than I thought. I say we can stock this sucker right now. It's over knee deep. It's thigh deep because I can feel that water running down my leg. I would not have guessed there's two plus. No. Right there. It, it looks flat, but it's not. This is a really deep hole and compared to the rest of the lake. So this whole pond is filling up through there. I mean, the fact that four days, you probably got, I don't know, maybe a hundred foot circumference diameter pond at a foot deep. I don't know. The cabin pond at the old house, the fishable area was about this big. Yeah, true. Like you could cast across that. Thing. Yeah. I mean, it's, I think it's filling up more than we think. I think our pond's just really damn big. I think that's our issue is we're, it's deceiving because we're like, oh my gosh, this is going to take forever. Yeah. You build a freaking 10, 15 foot three, four acre pond. Dumbass, it's gonna take a while, okay? There's not really any secret to it. I mean, you could, dude, and the fact this water's always gonna be cold because it's just pumping well water, you know, at 50, 60 degrees. I mean, you could put any fish in here right now. Catfish would be fine, bass would be fine. Like, not over the winter. Winter, they'd die, so we don't wanna do that. But here's my thought. What if, hear me out, what if we stock the pond and if we can't get the water high enough by winter, we could take them out and put them in the hatchery because the hatchery is going to be eight foot deep, which will be plenty deep for winter fish. But we could at least utilize the water while we have it now to grow fish. So maybe we could grow like some bait fish in the hatchery. We start growing the bass and the bluegills here. Winter comes. Hey, Ricky, your pond's not five, six foot deep, whatever, you know, however deep it needs to be for, for uh, 
winter kill. We'll go in here and, you know, Banjo and I can get all wet and bothered and try to get a scoop of all the fish, load them up, transport them back up there, and then just keep filling the thing over winter. But that, is that a good idea or bad? Are you like Flair, just get the thing full before you put a fish in here? I'm just looking at it going, you know how many minnows I could freaking procreate in this sucker? Well, not me, but the minnows themselves. Like, there's, that's a ton. We're talking about that little pool pond that you guys saw. I mean, this is the thing is 30, 40 times that. I feel like we're just missing an opportunity right now by not stocking this sucker. So we have a couple options. We can not stock it till it's, it, it's full or getting more full, or we stock it now and if something goes sideways where we gotta drain it and betonite it, we just harvest the fish out of it and go put them in the hatchery and let the hatchery do hatchery things and raise the fish in the winter, which is what we we're gonna do anyways. But I'm like, I think we could double dip. And if this thing can get deeper, you know, maybe it gets a four or five foot by winter. I mean, shoot, it's only freaking not, what, August? I mean, you got August, September, October, November, four months. This is four days, four months of filling. We might be able to get it full enough to not have to drain it and, and, and take the, but I think, you know, I'm not gonna kill any fish, right? Like, hear me out. I'm just gonna transport them, worst case scenario. I feel, how's that going? It's going. You getting her dialed in or what? You need, you need some help? I come over there, I can get nice and buddy. I got my, the whole thigh leakers on. How's that going? Dude, this sucker's deep. Oh! Oh, I just ruined it, but there's a raccoon. Really? Right. See, then they'll get in here and eat my fish. Yeah. And then you're gonna see your boy go full-blown coon killer, okay? That's what's gonna happen. Here, you mean to, to move something? Were you, were you surprised? I mean, yes. here, let me, I'll show, I'll yeah, show I'll the Yeah, say, for perspective. I mean, come on now. That's deep. You're almost to the sack. I said we stock it. I'm down. It's ready to rock. I mean, I was expecting maybe a foot. Yeah. I don't know why. Yeah, you're almost to the sack. But that, it, almost, it, almost, it almost got the taint. That's, dude, that's, I, mean, I feel optimistic now. And like the fact that the bottom's hard, I mean, the bottom's the water's hard. I'm, not, pushing I'm down not sinking on it. And like, compacting that stuff. So, four days, looks like this. I said we have four months before, so here, I don't know if you could hear what I was saying. So no. I said, why don't we stock it with bass and bluegill? Because it's plenty deep for them with fresh water. Yeah. If the, if the pond can't get deep enough by winter, so it's going to winter kill, or we decide to drain it and betonite it, we just pull the fish out and go put them in the hatchery. Mm -hmm. The hatchery's eight foot deep. That way we can raise predators here and raise minnows there. Yeah. And then we put them over there, and then the predators have minnows to eat for the winter. Uh -huh. That's a good idea. I mean, that might work. Yeah. Rather than just watching water fill up and not doing anything with it, we should put some fish in it. Yeah. Get, get them, the sooner you can get them started, especially in a warmer climate like it is right now, the faster they're gonna grow. You feed them, feed them, feed them, feed them, get them going. I, I really didn't think it was that deep. No. Fish can for sure survive, especially with it staying cold. It's one thing to have three hot, foot, two, yeah, water. two foot deep, that's just, you know, a hot cesspool. This is ice cold water going in there at all times. Get fresh mm -hmm. oxygen coming in. I think you could keep a lot of stuff alive, honestly. Yeah. So let me know what you guys think. We are filling up the pond. It's gonna keep filling. If I were to give you guys an update in four more days, it might look a little different, but probably not. We're no, the water's going that way. It's not going up. That's where the last place to fill, it looks like. Um, yeah. So we'll, we'll continue to give you guys updates through the other episodes that we do, but just know that it's, it's not, there's a chance. I'm telling you there's a chance. Believe in me, there's a chance. I'm telling myself there's a chance because my bank account can't handle it if there's not a chance. We need to have we need to have some faith. So comment down below your ideas. Should we stock it? Should we not? Should we just say quit wasting time, bet night it, and go shake a, a cup on the side of the road or something yeah. and start you know raising some raising yeah. some funds, some Banjo fundraisers. Have to fire up that OnlyFans. Yeah, Banjo, Banjo with the OnlyFans could solve all of my life problems to be honest with you. So if that's something you guys want to see, let me know in the comment section down below. We catch that and peace.